greetings in the matchless name of our Lord Jesus Christ and Savior. We give God the glory and the honor and the praise because we are able to reach you with the Anointed Word broadcast. My name is Ken Wally and today in this series we shall finish um, looking at the adversary and what he tries to do to hinder our pursuit of God's promises for our lives. Now, the, um, so far we have looked at how the enemy comes to uh, manifest himself to uh, fight against the assignment as it is given to us and um, we counteract that discouragement and that casting of doubt by having to craft a plan, a comprehensive plan. And um, I have an economic empowerment platform, Sibonet.com, uh, where I provide the tools uh, for you to uh, craft a strategic plan. Um, so you can always um, go onto that platform, www.sibonet.com, where I furnish you with all that it takes to plan your uh, a manifestation plan. And um, we have seen how the enemy comes against us by indirectly attacking the people who God has placed in our world. And um, we saw also that our role is to stand as intercessors, stand in the gap and intercede for those who God has placed in our world whenever the enemy attacks them. And then we saw how the enemy comes against us through the culture of the community where we are um, in the scheme of God's plan for our lives and how that we must leverage our baptism into Christ who is the head of all principality and power. We die with him, we are resurrected with him. Amen. And uh, we also looked at how the enemy attacks our work and our productivity uh, potentials by inciting pride in us. But then we must cultivate the spirit of humility so that we can increase the grace to become top achievers. Today we are going to continue and um, we're going to look at the fifth way in which the enemy comes against us. He comes up against our reputation. He comes up against our reputation. Now there is a story in the scriptures, um, in Acts chapter 17, um, Paul and Barnabas were on this missionary journey. They had been set apart to go out and take the gospel to the ends of the earth. And um, the scripture says on the missionary journey, Acts chapter 13, sorry, Acts 13 from verse 6. And when they had gone through the isle unto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was by Jesus, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. But Elimaeus the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, all full of subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately, there fell on him a mist and a darkness, 
and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, in this story, we see how the Apostle Paul is um, attempting to preach. Paul and Barnabas are preaching to this deputy who has called them to hear the gospel. And unfortunately, Satan manifests through his servant known as Bar Jesus, Elimiah. And the scripture says, Elimiah resisted the ministry of Barnabas and Paul to these deputy Sergius Paulus. Now, the Bible says that the apostle Paul looked at these this sorcerer in the eyes and confronted him and unleashed a judgment of blindness upon him. And the scripture says that this man became blind because he resisted the gospel that was being preached by Barnabas and Saul who is also the Apostle Paul, to the deputy. Now, this sorcerer was discounting the efficacy, the truth of the gospel, was casting doubt on the ministry of Barnabas and Paul to this deputy who was willing and had opened his heart to hear the gospel. Now, what Elimias the sorcerer was doing was casting doubt on the gospel. He was attacking the reputation of Barnabas and the apostle Paul who were preaching the good news of Christ to this deputy. That's one of the ways in which the enemy comes up against us. He attacks our reputation as we walk in our divine assignment. There are people who will come and attack who we are, attack our integrity, attack our character, attack what we represent. But one of the things that Jesus told the disciples in Mark chapter 16, where he commands them, I read Mark chapter 16, the great commission and he said unto them go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved but he that believeth not shall be damned and this sign shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So after that the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up in heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, confirming the word of with signs and wonders following. Amen. Now, so this was how Jesus equipped those who went about doing the assignment of preaching the gospel, the good news. He says, these signs and wonders shall follow them that believe. You see, the gospel is potent it's real it's not empty words it is the words of god himself any assignment that god has called us to fulfill has god inserted into that assignment as alpha 
And he says that so long as we yield ourselves to fulfill the mission, the assignment, he will never fail to manifest as Omega. He will insert himself with us as we fulfill the assignment as Alpha, and he will always manifest as Omega. So in the story in Acts 13, where Paul and Barnabas are preaching to Sergius Paulus, the, 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 the deputy, the government official, and um, Elimias, the sorcerer, is casting a dark shadow, is, is casting a shadow of, of, of resistance to the ministry of Barnabas and Paul. The Bible says that Paul leverages signs and wonders to confirm that the words they are speaking to the deputy is indeed the words of God. For there is power in the word. God will always show up to confirm his words with signs and wonders. So when the Apostle Paul invokes blindness on this deputy, there is an instant manifestation, an instant judgment, and that becomes a wonder to the deputy. The Bible says that when he sees that the words of Paul and Barnabas are not empty words, but the words of God himself, filled with the power of God, the Bible says that Sergius Paulus believes. Hallelujah! He becomes saved because he sees that there is power in the word of God. That is how we confront opposition from the enemy, especially opposition that casts a doubt on our product, on our brand, on our works. As we fulfill our divine assignment, when the enemy tries to cast a shadow on our assignment, we have to leverage signs and wonders and miracles. Regardless of what God has called you to do, it doesn't matter whether you're a merchant man, a, a tradesman, whether you are a, handy, a handyman, whatever God has assigned you as a vocation, as a profession, as a career, as a ministry, as a mission, as an assignment, once you start to do it, God inserts himself into your life as Alpha. And he also manifests as Omega. When the enemy tries to cast a shadow on your reputation, you leverage signs, wonders, and miracles. Because God has promised to confirm his word that you are executing with signs, wonders, and miracles. That's how we defeat the enemy. That's how the apostle Paul and Barnabas became victorious over Elimias the sorcerer. That's how we become victorious over every attempt of the enemy to cast a dark shadow on our brand, on our product, on our works, on our mission. Signs, wonders, and miracles. There was an a evangelist uh, um, who uh, tried to take the gospel to a certain part of the world that was known uh, uh, for their animism, for their idol worship, and nobody will listen to him. But when he, he realized that signs, wonders, and, and miracles, now that evangelist is, is a well-known evangelist, T.L. Osborne, and once he realized that signs, wonders, and miracles was the component that will get his ministry to be accepted once he began to employ signs, wonders, and miracles in the preaching of his gospel. His ministry took another turn. He was able to reach a lot of uh, animist communities in Asia, in Africa, and uh, he had a great impact in areas where there was strong occultic opposition to his mission. 
So no matter what God has called you to, always know that it is important when the enemy tries to cast a doubt on your brand, on your product, on your ministry, on your mission, by attacking your reputation, you always have to leverage signs, wonders, and miracles. Now the final way that the enemy, the sixth way that the enemy comes against us is he comes against our, our money, our finances. What he does is to block our regular sources of income, block our regular income stream. And when he does that, we become um, trapped with bills that we are unable to pay because our regular sources of revenue and income have been blocked or have been attacked by the enemy. Now when we read Philippians chapter 4, we read Philippians chapter 4 from verse 10. The scripture says, But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein you were also careful, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Notwithstanding you have well done that you did communicate with my affliction. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, that no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but you only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Now in this scripture, the Apostle Paul is describing a relationship that he has with the Philippians. Now, what is taking place here is that he mentions a relationship of giving and receiving. Now, the, the Christians in Philippi um, were always sending resources to the Apostle Paul any time that he was in need. Now, under normal circumstance, when the Apostle Paul will visit a particular church or plant a particular church, of course, they will minister into his needs by way of giving him offerings as long as he was there. But the Christians in Philippi, these Philippians, did not limit themselves to when the Apostle Paul was present with them. Even when he had departed from them and gone to other territories, when they realized that he was in need, they will send resources to him. They will send offerings to the Apostle Paul. So there was, an, there was a relationship of giving and receiving that transcended even when the Apostle Paul was present with them. Now, the Apostle Paul is revealing that because they constantly minister into his necessities, since he is a servant of God, doing the work of God, 
he said that their offerings to him were an odor of a sweet smell, a sweet fragrance unto God. It was an offering that will always trigger God to also minister to the needs of these Philippians. He will always meet them at the point of their needs because they also ministered to he, the Apostle Paul, in the day of his necessity. You know, in the scheme of our pursuit of God's plans for our life, we are going to have our regular sources and channels of revenue and income. If we work somewhere, we will have a paycheck. If it is a business, we're going to receive a, a, a revenue that comes, income that comes to us on a regular basis. But like I've just said, most often the enemy can attack our regular sources of, of revenue and income. And when the enemy does attack our sources of revenue, then we will need supernatural sources of provision to be opened unto us that is what the apostle paul was describing in his relationship with these philippians he says that you have a relationship with me that the other churches don't have they have they only minister to me when i am present with them but for you whenever i have a need you come through for me and because of that when you have a need god shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory because you minister seed into my need into my mission as a called servant of god as a missionary of the lord your offerings are always an odor of sweet fragrance to the Lord. And in the day of your necessity, in the day of your need, my God, who has called me to this missionary assignment, will also supply all your needs supernaturally. God will open the windows of heaven and bless you with abundance. So the Apostle Paul is exposing this Philippians church to the benefit of that unique relationship that they had with him as concerning giving and receiving. And I believe that that is the place where ministries that have been called to reach the body of Christ, ministries that reach areas where um, people are poor and cannot um, give offerings to to pay for the gospel that reaches them there are mi missions and ministries reaching out to poor communities in, in 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 southern america central america africa the islands asia many communities where the people are so poor and uh, uh, and, and these missions and ministries cost a lot of money to reach these communities. It takes a relationship of giving and receiving. People who have the capacity to give into these apostolic, prophetic, evangelistic ministries that go to these places. It takes those who covenant with us in partnership to reach the ends of the earth to get us to continue doing what God has called us to do. So this is the sixth way in which we defeat the enemy who comes against our regular sources of income by developing giving and receiving relationships with those who have been sent as missionaries to take the gospel to the underprivileged across the world. I believe that we now have been equipped through the last three 
series, Manifestation Plan 3, 4, and Manifestation Plan 5, which we're doing today, we have come to discover the six ways in which the enemy attacks us in the scheme of the manifestation plan of God for our lives. He comes against our assignment and we have to craft a plan to defeat every doubt and fear that the enemy can trigger in our minds. When we have a plan, God will always perform his word concerning our lives at every stage of their plan of the plan he says i'm watching over my word to perform it when the enemy comes against us by attacking the people in our world we stand in the gap and intercede for them and god says he will give us spoils credit that we can share with those people he will answer us and bring solutions to those who God has placed in our world that become victims of the enemy. When the enemy comes up against our culture or us through the culture or the community in which we are, God says we should leverage our baptism that Christ died for us and we are dead in Christ, but we are also resurrected. We are resurrected with Christ. No weapon forged against us shall prosper. Thirdly, when the enemy tries to instigate us through pride, God says we should leverage the spirit of humility, a teachable spirit to invoke grace, to become top achievers, great producers. When the enemy comes up against our reputation, he says we should leverage our authority with signs and wonders and miracles we can overcome every attack on our reputation. And finally, when the enemy comes up against our money, our regular sources of income and revenue, giving and receiving, giving to missionary work, giving and sponsoring God's mission to the underprivileged, positions us to receive supernatural provision to meet us at the point of our needs says my the apostle paul says my god shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in christ jesus in our next series we will continue to look at the manifestation plan and some of the things that god intends us to incorporate into that plan so that we shall experience the fullness of the manifestation of his glory. Today again, I am offering my book, my latest book, Seed and Harvest in a Concurrent Era. Any offering, any seed to this ministry and I will send you this book. Amen. So by sending any offering, and the number to call is 929-351-1870. Again, the number to call is 929-351-1870. The website is www.kennethwally.org. Again, the website address is www.kennethwally.org. If you prefer to send a mail or an offering by mail, by check, you can send it to the Anointed Word Broadcast, P.O. Box 444, Wood Lawn, New York. And the zip code is 10470. Again, if you want to send a check by mail as an offering, the, num the postal address is P.O. Box 444, Woodlawn, New York, and the zip code is 10470. God richly bless you for partnering with our ministry, for sowing seeds and offerings to our ministry. God shall supply all your needs 
according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. The Lord meets you at the point of your need. The Lord gives you victory over every adversity. The Lord elevates you above every challenge that confronts you. The Lord makes you victorious against every attack and scheme of the enemy against your life, against your mission, your organization, your enterprise, and your destiny. God be with you and your family. See you again next week as we continue on our series, Manifestation Plan. God bless you.